What's going on everyone? It's Simon and today we're talking all forms of stabilization while you're shooting video. questions I've been getting asked more and more is how do I stabilize video because I'm always in situations where I don't necessarily have the right gear quote unquote I can't take big gear so on and so forth and I've got all of the different types of gear that you could think of for stabilizing a camera we've got gimbal we've got glide cam we've got ball head tripod we've got fluid head tripod we even got a uh, simple camera strap so how do I use all this stuff and when would I use it and why would I use it? And so that's what we're going to dig into right now, starting with the simplest of them all, the camera strap. All right. So the beauty of the camera strap, and I personally use the peak design straps because they are so easy to quickly put on and take off. Um, I'm a huge fan of them, but mostly because they're really well made and I've never had an issue with one coming on done. Uh, but when it comes to using them for video, I see a lot of people doing handheld stuff where it's these big whooping motions and things like that, where they're completely handheld. And that's great for some things, but it's not great when you're trying to get a smooth shot. But let's say you don't have all of these other things and you just have your camera with your strap. And quite frankly, you can do a really good job of stabilizing your footage with just this. Uh, there's a specific way that I hold the camera. And a lot of times what I'm trying to do when I'm doing this is I want the camera pretty close to my body. Uh, you can go two routes. You can either go fully taut with your arms extended straight out or tuck your elbows into your body. So you're, you're kind of tucking them in right into your side like that. And then the way that I hold the camera makes it so that I can either use autofocus or manual focus. And so I'll put my thumbs on the inside of the strap and then my palms are like holding the body with my fingers up on the lens. So this really basically makes me one big unit and I'm just going to hit the record button so you can get an idea of kind of just, yeah. So this just makes me one big unit and I can sway and move. Um, and if I'm doing manual focus, my hand is right here to be able to make any focus adjustments that I need. Uh, super, super handy. And so this is literally like the simplest way to stabilize a camera. Pretty much everyone has a strap because unless you bought your camera used, it came with a strap of some sort. Uh, again, I'm just partial to the Peak Design ones because they come undone really easily. Like they come off really easily, but they're still really strong not getting paid by them to say that. I just really like the product and I've been using their product for probably since the original version came out. I forget how long ago that was, four or five years ago, something like that. Whatever, it's a fantastic product and I love it. Um, yeah, so that is how I use a camera strap for video stabilization. And what situations am I using my camera strap? Well. If I happen to be out shooting and have to get a quick shot where like a situation's unfolding right in front of me, I don't have time to throw it on to some other stabilizer. Boom, easy peasy, good to go getting myself a shot because I'd rather get myself a stable-ish shot than not get the shot at all. Especially because the way that I shoot, everything's kind of unfolding in front of me. I'm not really scripting narrative and things like that where I am just, whatever's happening is what's happening in front of me. Also, it's great when you're in really small spaces. Uh, I was talking to a friend about shooting in an airplane recently and other small, super tight situations where you don't have room for a glide cam or a Ronin or even a tripod to be able to get around, but still keep it so that those shots are a little bit smoother than if it was just a completely handheld shot, because especially with the A7 cameras, you don't even realize some of your movements until you're looking at footage later. Uh, when I am doing this, I am using the internal body in-body stabilization because of course I am. It makes everything just that little bit better. 
there are certain situations where I will turn off in-body stabilization, but for the most part, I leave it on. Uh, that's really where I'm using this. All, it's also great if I really wanna get in tight to like a product or something that's like right in front of me, like food or something along those lines where I wanna be able to move around where I want full control of exactly how the camera is angled that I may not be able to do as easily with either of these devices in that situation. So that is the camera strap. Now we're gonna work our way up in complexity and we're gonna now talk about the ball head tripod. Ball head tripod I think is the smartest first investment that someone should make as a photographer or filmmaker. And I say that ahead of the fluid head because it is a much more versatile situation. Uh, the ball head tripod is a fantastic device that just literally lets you put the camera anywhere, any angle. So it's a little bit better for getting certain shots. If you want to do something on a tabletop or you want to shoot something on the ground, things like that. It works with both photo and video. So it's a more versatile piece of equipment. And especially for what I'm doing when I'm overseas, versatility is key. And one of the features that I love in a lot of tripods now is that you're starting to see more come with a removable tripod leg. Uh, comes in super handy and I absolutely love it. Uh, it. Makes it so that I can use it as a monopod and get into some tighter situations that I wouldn't be able to get the full tripod into, but it still lets me have that quality image. Next, we're gonna talk about the, uh, the big boy tripod with the fluid head for doing pan tilt moves, things like that. Uh, I am a huge fan of a photo tripod. I like the twist locks over clip locks a lot of the time because they do typically hold grit and grime and dirt out of them a little better, my personal opinion. I've also switched my tripods to carbon fiber, which makes it a little bit lighter for me with what I'm doing for travel, but a good aluminum tripod will do you justice. I've used a Photo aluminum tripod for probably seven years and it still holds up, shows signs of wear, but it's still a great tripod and still gets used all the time. Uh, but the fluid head on the photo sticks, I use what's this leveling ball that makes it a lot easier for me to set up a video shot. So that way when I'm panning across, I know that I'm getting a perfectly level pan. I'm not getting an angle and it makes it easier than trying to finesse each leg one at a time to make it perfectly level. Uh, this has been huge. This is from Sunway Photo. And then on top, I have the Manfrotto MVH 500. Uh, it's the smallest tripod head that I could get for a fluid head. Right now I've got the arm on it for doing pans and tilts, but typically if I'm traveling overseas, I don't carry this, which is why it looks like it's in so much better condition than everything else on the tripod. Uh, the reason for that is similar to how I operate this with the camera strap is how I will actually do my pans and tilts with the fluid head. And it does the job. Every, every tripod and tripod head is slightly different. So if I was using a higher end tripod head that had more finesse of my like drag and such, cause some of the higher end fluid head tripods give you the ability to really finesse how fast it'll move and things like that. I would use the, the arm just to be able to get some little bit more finesse in it. And also with the fluid head, I'm using that in a lot of situations where I'm doing two camera interviews or I want to be able to do some of those like on tripod movements that I can't do with a ball head. Uh, really just the, the subtle movements, things like that, like a tilt up, whatever. That's when I'm pulling out the uh, fluid head or if I'm doing a two camera interview, uh, the I'm a lot of times putting the FS5 onto this set of tripod le legs with the tripod head just because it really does hold it well. Onto the glide cam. The glide cam is a staple in my life. I love it. I love it. And the reason for that is it is a fantastic tool that does not require a battery. One of the things that I'm always considering is what is my power situation while I'm working overseas 
So how many batteries do I have to charge? And on an upcoming project, one of my other worries is, will batteries hold up to the heat? Uh, it could potentially be 130 degrees on an upcoming project, and that's really hot, and I've had actual batteries destroy themselves just sitting in a bag because it was so hot in this similar environment to where I will be. Uh, but that's where the glide cam comes in super handy because it doesn't have batteries. And it still does allow me to get those moving shots stabilized. And I feel like it has a nice little like natural sway to it that really does look great. And it's very organic. Um, I use this pretty regularly when I'm overseas. And I love it because this I'm using the Devon Graham model specifically because it is so much easier to adjust versus the HD 2000, the HD 4000. Um, it just makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, that's really the gist of it. I'm using this a lot of times when I want to do like longer distance moves or if I'm in a situation where I have space that I can finesse the, like a, a like a pan around someone trying to do so, or a situation, something along those lines where I want to kind of parallax a bigger move than just like something that's right in front of my body with like a slight shift. I'm able to do a little bit more with it. Um, tracking shots, walking, things like that. I myself am not good enough to really run full speed and keep it super, super stable. I can do a decent job um, unless it's in low mode. Low mode, I'm pretty decent with it, but I'm honestly not the greatest with the glide cam, but I'm able to get the shots that I need for projects and it does come in handy. Last but not least, we've got the Ronin S. Uh, the Ronin S is a workhorse for me. I used to use the Ronin M, but this is obviously a lot smaller and a lot more capable. Uh, the reasons why I love the Ronin S is it has so many features that I can use to get a variety of shots, whether it's the motion control where you can pre-record where you want it to go and it will make the moves, time-lapse mode, uh, just the stabilization factor. I'm really able to run at high speeds while using it, uh, getting shots. I have it set so I can have a similar side-by-side -side feel to like the, the uh, dual handles of like a bigger gimbal or the glide cam where I feel like I have more control like this than I would having my hands like this when it comes to turning and getting a nice smooth turn. And that is a mixture of this rig plus how I have the settings internally. Now, one of the other things that I love about the Ronin S is I actually have it rigged with an Arca Swiss plate. So it's easy for me to take my A7, throw it on here, take it off, throw it onto a ball head, that kind of thing. I'm not changing tripod plates all the time. Uh, one of the reasons why I prefer the Ronin S over the SC is because it's a little bit bigger, it actually holds like further zooms and things like that that I wouldn't be able to necessarily do just because the SC is so small, it can't necessarily hold the weight. Um, that's the reason why I love the Ronin S. Uh, situations that I'm using that is when I wanna run at full speed, when I really wanna finesse the smoothness, when I know that I have power access to be able to charge the batteries, and when I wanna be able to do repeatable movements if I'm stationary, but don't wanna bring another device to do that motion controlled stuff. Uh, these are all fantastic tools that have their own unique spot in kit that ha do a great job and they can act in some ways in a redundancy for one another. Uh, if you guys have any questions about what I'm using, why I'm using it beyond what I just said, leave me a comment down below. If you have any other tips or tricks for stabilizing cameras, leave that down below as well. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notified for our next video. Other than that, have a great week. I'll see you guys next time.